Okay. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the June 9th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee, bright and early at 7.30 in the morning. And uh, seeing that we have a quorum, I'm going to first uh, read the announcement, Governor Baker's emergency order that allows us to have this meeting virtually and let everyone know that that I'm not going to be able to keep reading that because the emergency order is going to be lifted. Um, we do have permission. We heard this Monday, and Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we have permission if we want to continue to meet virtually up until September 1st, we can definitely do that. Um, so that is some, and then afterwards, not till September 1st, Paul? No, so the, no legislation has been passed. So as, as of today, come June 15th, June 15th, we go back to pre-pandemic times where you have to meet in person unless you do remote participation. High likelihood there, there will be legislation passed and they're looking at an April date to extend the remote uh, participation by. Okay, so that is the update on this may be potentially the last virtual meeting we have, but Probably seeing not. that I, I need to um, go across the room in my screen to call on everyone to make sure you can uh, hear and be heard. So I'll just start with Paul, which we already know he's here. <laughs> Paul? I'm here. I'm here. Sean? I'm here. Mike? Here. Allison? Here. Anthony? Here. Phoebe? Here. Steve Schreiber? Counselor Steve Schreiber. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Jonathan? I came, I'm here. Dwayne? I'm here. And Diane? Here. So I think that is everyone except for Rupert. Um, and, and Ben. So there's Ben. Oh, there's Ben. Here's Ben. Okay, Ben. Hi, Ben. So I, I've just gone across the screen and called on people. So if you could let us know whether you can hear and be heard. He's putting on his headphones. Ben, could you just signal to us that we're coming through so you can hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we're missing Rupert. Um, we, we will start the meeting and I think what, one thing I let everyone know that at 745 we expect Margaret Wood to join us um, as a panelist. So I just wanted the agenda is pretty simple this morning. I won't put it up on the screen, but it's to report on what we heard at MSBA on Monday about OPM and then to discuss next steps with the potential appearance of Margaret Wood and answer, and she has agreed to join us, and then any um, other issues that might have come up. Um, so the late breaking news is the MSBA, and I'll just do a really quick report, and then Mike, maybe you could join in, because it's the first one I've ever been to. Um, so what I was really pleased with is they clearly had read the proposal um, and what the, and our selection and uh, were highly pra in praise of each, they went through multiple voices of in praise of what was being proposed, both for our goals and the way ANSWER had responded to them. And one thing I thought was notable for me is they were commended Amherst as a town for, for stretching out to say that we wanted to build a net zero building, net zero ready building, and for including the heavy weight on women and minority led businesses or um, group teams. And they thought that that was taking a leadership role and they were hoping other school districts would take that. So that was a nice comment I heard. Um, and we will get a formal letter from them as I understood in a few days, but they said, go ahead and have this meeting. <laughs> um, so Mike, Paul, do you wanna report on anything else um, of note? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just, very briefly say that uh, a presentation was made, uh, which could be forwarded to the committee. Um, that was a public meeting we were in on, on Monday. 
that I thought uh, just, I, I think just showed the professionalism and um, that answer brings that Margaret brought. And, you know, there was a number of questions more for the OPM than for us, uh, so to speak. And I thought, you know, they, they clearly uh, had a lot of confidence in, in her and the firm to be able to work uh, with us on communication to bring this project to, project to uh, where we wanted, all wanted to get to at the end with, with uh, a better learning environment for children. So I was just very impressed with her. I think having been to uh, a number of MSBA meetings, not all of them, I think you, you, you very much uh, describe things well, Kathy, but not all of them feel, um, they often feel more neutral than that one. I was actually struck by how positive the conversation was. Uh, MSBA uh, tends to keep things close to the vest, even if they're very positive about something, they're not necessarily, um, in Amherst, we can be very emotional and emotive about things. MSBA is much more, you know, it's in the financial district for a reason, right? Where it's located. And, and yet I thought there was a lot of non-neutral positive energy towards the town, uh, oh, yeah. and towards uh, the owner, yeah. the selection of the owner project manager. So I was really heartened for that. Um, and it wasn't necessarily what I was expecting based on past experience. That's not a critique of MSBA. It's just how they do business. Um, so I thought the meeting went uh, very well from my perspective. And I'd just like to add, I, I agree with that um, assessment, especially of the MSBA's attitude, which was very positive. I was, I was uh, uh, pleased that they had that attitude towards the town because we can be um, challenging at times for state agencies to work with. Um, I think the thing that he emphasized, though, uh, was the aggressive timeline that we have and make, you know, making a note that we will need to work hard to meet the timeline that we have established and we should be this committee should be very cognizant of that and i think a, a very valuable thing right now kathy if i can is we ask mike to say okay now that we have an opm what's next and maybe that's after answer gets here or oh i no. i would love it if mike would do that and then margaret can come in on that because margaret presented a timeline that i'm assuming she had talked with the both of you that's very aggressive so mike what's next would be great. Sure. So the next thing is, uh, I think after you meet Margaret and, and we get the formal letter, which they seem to pledge was going to occur this week, uh, we then take the next steps, which are uh, primarily focused on hiring a designer. Uh, on the timeline that that answer presented, that would take the summer and try to have that wrapped up in September. Uh, that's an aggressive timeline in, in and of itself. But I, I do think uh, we entered this process, both the town and the district, with urgency, and uh, I actually like that answers right along with us, that the urgency exists. I spoke at length, as Mr. Harrington can tell you, last night about some of the continuing issues we have in our school buildings. They're not going away just because we're in this process, uh, and um, some heroic efforts by Mr. Harrington, Mr. Roy Clark, and others to make sure that there's cooling at Fort River, because we, we didn't know if that was going to happen. Um, and um, so that would be the next step. What's really different about that process is a three member team, uh, which Margaret may describe. Uh, and that decision is not made by that three member team. The three member team joins a panel uh, of the MSBA designer selection committee. They have 12 votes, we have three. Um, and so it is a different format, but I think that what the committee might, what I expect the committee will notice is as opposed to me giving updates as much or Kathy or Paul, answer will really be in charge of supporting us to bring the process along. They are, you know, I, I'm happy to go retreat from this role that I've sort of uh, been playing a little bit uh, because the, they are our conduits um, in many ways, the MSBA. They will support us to be uh, communicating with the larger community. And that's gonna be a wonderful resource for all of us. Um, you're all probably sick of hearing me talk at these meetings. Uh, I know I'm, I hear enough of my own voice in general. And so they're gonna come with much more expertise, experience, uh, and, and really their goal is gonna to be to guide this committee to make the best choices for the community, right? So they're not in a decision-making seat. They're not gonna say, you should choose this person or you should, right? But they are our protection to make sure we're making the best decisions for the town. Uh, so for me, there's a lot of comfort that comes from that. There's a lot of comfort. Thank you for all of you who uh, participated in the selection of the OPM. You know, I'm really excited to work with them. I didn't know this firm, did never met Margaret before a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I think that's what's going to feel different is uh, things are going to accelerate. And then once we have a designer on board, things are going to accelerate very, very quickly with, you know, uh, getting feedback from this group and the community 
looking at sites, starting to work on models. So I know it, it can feel like a slog until you, uh, you know, it's a lot of process on the front end, uh, but it really will pick up. And that's, you know, uh, really why I think we're all collectively trying to expedite things. So we actually get into the, the meat of the matter and can move forward as a community. So I don't know if that, that that's helpful, but that's sort of what I see the next steps are. Uh, Answer may be able to, to talk a bit about that um, and how you select the three members uh, to be on the designer selection. Uh, they'll probably be able to describe that in, in better detail than I can. Just the other thing I wanted to add, Mike, that I heard, again, I heard it on Monday um, as Answer laid out the timeline and was pushed by MSBA. This is an aggressive timeline. It was designer on board selection by the fall and then by the fall of 2022 a vote townwide <laughs> you know so they're moving to go from design to all the other steps along the way and they were pushed on how could we achieve that and they said because of uh the work that had been done before both on wildwood on F fort river that um and, and I know, Jonathan, you were with the Fort River Project, but there's been a lot done on the actual choices of the land in terms of looking at it and what can be accommodated on it. And some of that would normally take a lot of it time. And as long as MSBA will accept some of that work and the designer will accept some of that work, they can move some steps more quickly. So she just des she described that timeline and was actually challenged on it. and responded quite well with one of the things we'd noticed when both with a initial response and in the interview, she had read the materials and gotten to know Amherst, um, you know, so it wasn't just any town. She had clearly taken the time to figure out the time before this time, you know, and, and the time now, um, and is well aware of the concern about small school feeling and some of the things that we had emphasized early on. Um, so, so with that, um, you know, I, I saw that timeline. I said, okay, that to me just means there is a lot of work. And my, as Mike, you said, you know, thank goodness we have someone figuring out when the next meeting is and what we need to do. Um, and one question I had for you, cause she, I asked her to join a little bit later than the starting, just so we could do this. Um, would you want to, also bring her on at some point in front of the school committee? Yeah. Yeah, so I can speak a little to that. So we talked about that, I think I mentioned last night um, in my updates uh, that uh, the MSBA process, uh, where we were. Um, so I think that makes sense. I think the school committee's calendar is gonna uh, be light in July. Um, that's not a knock on the town council. I just wanted to say that uh, I think uh, we'll get back in the swing of things after June, probably uh, back in August from the schedule that we looked at last night that the chair brought forward. Uh, but I do think uh, that makes sense to get them in front of the school committee. I also wanna note that the, the school committee themselves had a long conversation last night about you know one of the critical issues, which is sixth grade and middle school. And it wasn't a decision-making meeting, but I think uh, what I heard clearly from the school committee is they wanna be part of uh, they want to make sure that the, the building committee is queued up uh, and not waiting on the school committee for, for critical decisions and wanting to collaborate. So uh, I think they want to be part of the sort of aggressive timeline and to be working collaboratively. Uh, and Ben, you can correct me if I'm misrepresenting uh, what I heard, what I think I heard last night from the committee, but I think there was a strong interest in uh, partnering uh, because there are some things like the educational plan that the school committee does need to get involved with and they're on board and they want to support this committee in, in every way they can because they, they believe in the work and they, they know the value of um, the sooner we get a successful project in, the sooner students are in uh, spaces that we all think they deserve. And so that was, uh, I think, a really positive discussion last night on that topic. And there was kind of heartfelt appreciation for the building committee and how do we help them. And, and one of the ways they, they help them is there's some critical decisions in the future that are in their hands uh, more than the building committee and they wanna be part of uh, partnering and, and working on those um, as quickly as the, we can. Are there any questions or comments by um, everyone who's sitting here listening while we're waiting for Margaret? So, so Mike, you had said that um, the three people that would be from Amherst on the designer selection, 
Um, Margaret will guide us of what kinds of people those, you know, what kinds of people, <laughs> you know, humans for starters, but. <laughs> there may actually be regulations or, or recommendations from MSBA on that. I seem to sort of remember that last time, but she will have more clarity on that. Um, um, I, I think it's uh, perhaps a less free flowing process where sort of anything goes in terms of who joins and not anybody goes, but like, you know, it was kind of like volunteers. I think there's, they're a little more intentional in terms of who you bring in front of MSBA for that panel. Um, and I know they'll want someone with an education background as part of that group. I know they'll want someone who's an elected official in the community. Uh, I know last time around, it was the chair of the school committee, town uh, chair of the school committee, myself, and I believe that then town manager, I'd have to go back and check, but, but I, I think there may be, I, I'm sorry, I, you know, Margaret, or Anthony has a hand up. He may know the answer fine. to this. And I just, yeah. just, you know, in setting our next, I was gonna wait for Margaret to join us to figure out our next meeting and the extent to which we have to make decisions as a, uh, a larger group, um, smaller group. And uh, so I'm, I'm not, uh, yes, Anthony. So it's uh, one person designated by the school committee, one is the superintendent or designee, and one is the chief executive of the city or town or designee. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. That was much better than what I said. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew that, Steve, yes. And I, I'm sorry, I might have missed this, but when exactly do we think that the designer selection process will happen? The, what, what Margaret laid out as a timeline is that over the summer, we would uh, be putting together the request for uh, services and we would be able to make a selection to make that decision by the fall. So, the steps that go into that, Steve, I'm less certain. I looked at the MSBA guidelines on it and not surprisingly, there are lots of ingredients that go into that and including the, the drafting of it, the posting of it, how long it has to be out. Um, they, we were, uh, she was encouraged or challenged to think about that if we want to use some of the work that was done before, that we write the request in a way that people understood we're still open to anybody. It doesn't have to be the same designer we had before that there, it doesn't mean that we're narrowing it to just a few because they want to get at least three proposals in. So the, how we advertise for it, they said the messaging, the messaging of that has to be carefully worded. Um, so does that answer, Steve, does that answer that question? You know, what I don't know is what does that mean for July, August, and September, you know, if we're selecting by the fall? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other, um, Jonathan, you, you headed up the Fort River study. Um, so I think one of the things people were thinking is that in terms of, uh, the geography, the geological testing, that that's some of the work that's been referenced that we've done some of that. So any think, thoughts on that? I think there's a, a, a bit there that can be uh, incorporated into, into this process. Um, you know, uh, certainly the, the geotechnical work, but I, I think there's a, a good basis for, for beginning the exploration on that site. Um, and, you know, as I understand it, at least this process is gonna have to look at a couple of sites, uh, and, and we've got some good base information on, on both Wildwood and Fort River, I think. As long as the weather doesn't change too fast on us, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think, you know, until, ah, Margaret has joined us. Um, welcome, Margaret. Let's make sure you can I saw your face. Thank come you. <laughs> oh, hi. Sorry, I had it took me a minute to find the invite this morning. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. And maybe what we'll do is just uh, quickly go around the room so you know the faces. I sent Margaret. Okay. 
I sent Margaret a list of everyone who's on the committee and she met some of us briefly on the uh, OPM selection, but um, why don't I just, um, I, I can't call, I guess you all don't see the same order, but um, people go around the room and then just say next to the next person. Paul, why don't you start? You've got to unmute. First things first, uh, Paul Bachelman, town manager. I'm gonna hand it to Sean. Sean Mangano, Director of Finance. I'm going to hand it to Allison. I'm Allison Estes. I'm the Assistant Principal at Wildwood Elementary. I'm handing it to Mike. It's Allison, Mike Morris, Superintendent. I'll hand it to Anthony. Anthony Delaney, Procurement Officer. I'll hand it to Phoebe. Hi, I'm Phoebe Merriam. Uh, I'm a parent and community member. Um, Jonathan. And I am a parent and community member as well. And I will hand it to Steve. Steve Schreiber, town councilor, vice chair of this committee. I'll hand it to Kathy. I'm, I'm Kathy, Kathy Shane. I'm chair of the committee and also on the council with Steve. And let's see, Allison. I'm handing it to Allison. Oh, Allison. And I will hand it to Ben. I'm Ben Harrington. I'm the school committee rep and also assistant director of facilities. And I pass it to. And I'm Dwayne hey. Chamble, the outcome coordinator for the district. And I think we have Rupert. Uh, Diane, or to Rupert, yeah. yeah. Diane and Rupert. Good morning, calling in by phone, Diane Chamberlain, current principal at Fort River School. And Rupert. Hi, I'm Rupert. I'm over in this corner over here. I'm the facilities director uh, for the school system. Right, well, that was done not as smoothly, thanks to me, as it might have been done. <laughs> but Margaret, the, our time is now yours. And we're, okay. as, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh my gosh, yes. I just have to say, um, they're replacing the gas lines on our street right now. So if you think you're hearing excavating and drilling equipment in the background, you're not imagining things. I stayed home today thinking it would be quieter here, but it's not. So um, yeah, so I'm Margaret Minerwood. Um, I am uh, an owner's project manager with Answer Advisory. We're in Boston, but we also have staff in um, Westfield. And in this case, we have somebody else on our team in, in Worcester. And as I mentioned, um, I think in the interview, um, my husband and I have uh, a home in Hilltowns in um, Cummington, West Cummington. So we spend a lot of time in Western Mass and we think of ourselves as really um, being connected to the community. And so um, we have a staff of about 30 people um, in and around Boston. And we've been doing school projects for pretty much as long as I've been there, which is about 16, 17 years, 18 years, I guess this year. So um, we haven't done dozens, but the ones we've done have been really successful projects and we don't take on more work than um, we can do really well. And we're thrilled to be on your team. So what, I don't know what you had intended for this morning, but um, I did have an opportunity to listen in on one of your earlier committee meetings when you were kind of mashing your way through the designer, the OPM RFS. And um, I heard a lot of, I sort of want, kept wanting to raise my hand and say, I can answer that. <laughs> I know there are um, just some general questions that people probably have about the process. So we could, I could do a couple of different things. I could walk you through an overall schedule that I put together in order to develop our fee as a kind of um, structure for, uh, fleshing out questions you might have. I'm not sure that I'll be able to answer them all today, but I thought it might be appropriate um, sometime pretty soon to just get all the questions out on the table. Does that sound like a useful yes. exercise? That would, that would be right. perfect. So since I'm doing this at home and I have a little, I don't have two screens, give me a second while I get up the right document. And, and I, I think, yeah, you. We, Paul, is she authorized to share her screen? You share, Margaret? 
Yes, hang on, just, I'm just opening up the document. Okay, this looks like it. So this was um, so right after the interviews and our notification. Um, first thing I did was I sat down and I sketched out a schedule because our work, um, the architect's work is more defined in some ways than our work is in the sense there's a kind of common set of steps that you go through. Um, the owner's project manager um, fee tends to be more related to overall schedule. Um, so um, let me, I'm gonna just share the screen here. I can. Here we go. Everybody see this? I'm probably gonna need to move it around a little bit. Um, yes, we, yes, we can. Okay, let me see. Here we go. All right. I'm, I'm gonna keep this fairly large on the screen and I'm gonna actually enlarge it further um, just so that we can really focus on the tasks. All right, so everybody see this. I so yeah. here's, here, right here is a list of the kind of key components of the project um, to get to um, an approved MSBA project that can be the basis of a local vote. And so we are here. <laughs> we were just on Tuesday, as you probably discussed before I came on at the OPM um, selection committee where they, they blessed your decision. Um, and the next step is designer selection. Once that's done, we'll start feasibility. I'll move this over a little bit. Um, at the end of feasibility, and I'll explain that what the, is in the feasibility um, uh, piece of the process, there is a submission. Um, then if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do as you did before, um, a construction manager selection, we recommend that that's kind of a good time to do that because you tend to have a duration and an estimated cost for the, a very high level estimated cost for the project. Then there's what's called the schematic design process where you take what is the preferred option for the community and you do enough, enough of a deep dive on the design that you can establish a really solid price that you can depend on because it's based on that price that the um, funding agreement gets executed. So if the price goes up later after the funding agreement, the MSBA's perspective is that it's all on you. So this, that piece of it is not something you wanna rush through because it's really where you, you nail the price. Then there's a, a milestone um, meeting at the MSBA during that period. Then you make the submission of the schematic design to the MSBA, they vote, then you do your local appropriation. And honestly, pretty much, Throughout this process, as you'll see after I scroll over, um, you are um, doing community engagement once um, you've started feasibility. So that's the overview. Now I will say that um, if you go all the way to the end, the way I developed this was, this is the line for the local vote. So the question was really, you know, what, where, what's your, What's your end point for this process? And so I, I kind of to develop the schedule, knowing that those were the tasks you needed to do, I kind of backed into this. So if in November, and you, down here, you can see this green line as community engagement, showing kind of greater or lesser levels of um, outreach and communication, depending on how dark the green is. So just backing up. You need, obviously need by, in order to have a vote in November, you really need to have the, the cost of the project established for the purposes of, you know, publishing um, the votes and all of that. As it happens, you know, you also have to, it's, that's really gonna come out of the submission. So I'll go back to the beginning in a minute, but essentially what I established for discussion 
um, is that we would have the final pricing of schematic design here. It would go into the MSBA submission. Um, we don't know right now the dates for the MSBA votes, but they tend to have an August meeting and you tend to need to submit about six weeks previously. So these dates are really being driven by the November vote, okay? So now I'm gonna go, that's the end point. Um, I'm just showing you this as I developed it myself. So now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and tell you how we get there. So um, next step is designer selection. Um, I am hoping that we can do this in four months, but it, we're really, and I know, I know I heard um, on the one call I listened in on that um, the, the duration that it took for the OPM selection was a surprise to people. It always seems like it takes a whole lot longer than it needs to. I am gonna write to Brittany Gomez today and who's our project manager at the MSBA and ask her for the schedule that they see. But for the purposes of this, I showed it taking you know, almost five months. Hopefully we'll have the designer on board in September. And the process looks like the process you just went through, which is we're gonna write an RFS, we finalize it, we give it to the MSBA, they comment, we respond, then it gets advertised. Then we take in applications. I think this will be a, a very, I mean, people will be really interested, designers will be really interested in this project. So I think you'll get, I wouldn't be surprised if you got eight or nine or even 10 applications. Um, honestly, it's easier if you get fewer, but I just think it's gonna be a popular project. Um, then you, um, the MSBA gives us about a week to kind of digest and give them, um, I'm not even sure if they take comments anymore, but to, for us to kind of look at them and then we have the first of two meetings with the MSBA designer selection panel. So for those of you that have been involved with other public procurement, um, the other public procurement in the state goes through the designer selection board, which is for everything else but schools. Designer selection panel is the MSBA's own mini version of this. Um, fortunately, they're doing the meetings now on Zoom, so you won't have to troop into Boston, which I always thought was a huge disadvantage for the folks in Western Mass. What they'll do in the first meeting is they will go through all of the applications and they will shortlist the ones that are um, the top ranked. There will be, I think you are allowed to have three participants on the committee and I definitely recommend that you have three because it's three votes in a group of about 12, I believe. Um, so the all the participants vote, um, they get ranked, and then th typically three, but occasionally four, if there is a tie in the scoring, are interviewed. So if you think about what, where we are now, so we're gonna write, the, hopefully gonna write the RFS in June, go back and forth with the MSBA, gets advertised in July. Hopefully we would have applications in August go through the applications sometime in August, there would be the um, short list. And then the second meeting is the interviews. So I am hoping that we would have interviews in September, but that's a little bit subject to the MSBA. And I think um, the faster that we can do the RFS and get it back to them, the more quickly we can move that along. Can it's, I ask a couple of clarifying questions, Margaret? Sure. So one, when you say we write the RFS, you mean you write the RFS and we review it, right? So I write the RFS. Yeah, okay. And secondly, ah. okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, let you finish the butt. <laughs> I, ju I just want to say, I think that coming together, and I you went through this with the OPM, coming together around what it is you want, um, is it's a real committee um, consensus building tool. So I will write it, I will make recommendations to you, but it's it's really about the group of you sort of saying, this is what we want. And the sec second question is, do you see any barriers to the MSBA's designer selection committee meeting in August since that's a heavy vacation month? You know, um, 
they're pretty regular. They, I mean, they, they meet um, twice a month. So it's, it's more than a monthly meeting. I can ask Brittany about their schedule. It is possible that they're not, they're gonna skip a meeting, but it's also a fairly big committee. And they tend, unlike the board, which is kind of at a higher level and is blessing money, they tend to go ahead if only one or two people are missing because they have a quorum otherwise. Great, thank you. Okay, so here we are now, we're sort of in September, October. Hopefully we have designer on board. So the next piece we have to do is this piece called the feasibility. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Margaret. I just want to call out to Kathy that other people have their hands up as well. Okay, thank you. I, I, okay, I, Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan and then Sean. See, I'll lower my hand because sometimes I forget to do that. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to kind of reinforce that while I'm, I'm very glad that we have Margaret on board to write the, the bulk of the RFS, um, our input uh, in that process is, is kind of, is very critical because it's the R, it's really our only opportunity to frame what we think of as locally important issues, both for the potential designers that are going to respond, but also for the, for the folks uh, who, who will not be, you know, part of our community who will be selecting the designers, um, and so we want to make sure our voices is heard, and and so participating over this next uh, month or so um, in a vigorous way is, I, I think, critical. It is. It is really important, but um, you know, I, I will say about building committees, um, you'll be together for a long time. <laughs> And you know this is this is your opportunity to sort of develop your. I, I know you've been meeting already, but um, it's it's almost like um, you know a shared common developing a shared common understanding of the project is really important, and that really starts with writing with, with the work you've already done plus the designer RFS and saying what is it we want. Okay, so now we're in this feasibility. Uh, Margaret, I just see two other. I just want to oh, see sure. Mike and Sean both have their hands up, and I'm my screen is not showing everybody's face. So someone else, if I miss you, Mike and then Sean. Sean was up first, so I'll defer to Sean. Okay, Sean. Thanks, Mike. Um, do we still have a choice over uh, CM at risk versus design bid build? And if we do, when do we need to make that decision? So you do have a choice. Um, I mean, what's interesting about this is that you've been, the choice is, is really, you've been through the process already of asking for permission to use this procurement or delivery, the construction delivery method. Um, what you'd have to do is sort of, and the Kathy Colasar, who actually reviews these documents, the OIG applications, is on the OPM selection committee. So we saw her on Tuesday and I told her we would probably be back. Um, we would update the previous document with the new team. Everything else would stay the same. You don't have to pick the CM here. It's something that I recommend because um, if, you're going, if you're thinking about it, it, it's something I recommend because the greatest value they bring to the project in its early stages is establishing the cost of the project with the eyes of a contractor. So I think it's really valuable if we kind of move along here a little bit for them to be on board by the middle of schematic design so that they are really giving input to the designer about construction costs. And I think you did something similar to that in the previous project. Yeah, we did. We didn't, um, we didn't make it, uh, but we did bring this, we picked the CM. Um, yeah, I was just thinking at one of our next meetings, I'm not necessarily leaning one way or the other, but I think it would be good to sort of have a, discussion about the benefits of each mm -hmm. each method. Um, I know one's sort of generally lower cost, but one maybe results in a better product. Um, and so cost will be a big thing for us just because we have other building projects going on in town. So I think it'd be a good conversation yeah. for the, the committee to have. And so we can kind of weigh in where we think we should go. Yeah, and I'd be happy to talk to that, talk about that at length. The one thing I will say is that you are not committed to using the CM even if you use them for pre-construction. You can actually have a CM involved. And in, I mean, I would generally recommend it for reasons we can talk about at the next meeting, mostly having to do with the fact that if you're gonna be doing phased 
demolition and construction, it's, it, it, you will get a better understanding of the costs and requirements for that if they're in the room when that's being established. And since it, this phase is all about the money um, and getting the number right, that's useful. But you're not required to continue. The contract is, um, the CM contract gets authorized by phases. So you give them a, you sign the contract and then you authorize them for pre-construction or you, you know, and then what, if you decide to go forward only then do you authorize for construction, you can go through this process and then say, nope, we're gonna bid it. Okay, we're gonna no, that's, helpful. It. that's helpful to know. Okay. Okay, and so here we are. Another one, question? One, one more, Mike. I'm just gonna call on Mike to Margaret. So Mike. Okay. Yeah, and it's a small point, but um, I talked to Brittany, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago uh, about designer selection just to get a sense. And, and there are dates that are established. So there's two dates in August, one date in September, two in October uh, that are, they've already put publicly on their website. So just, we have that information. I'll, I, you know, I think I can send it along to, to Anthony or Kathy to share out uh, with the full committee. But you know, based on that, it does look like, you know, two in August, one September, two in October are uh, already on their schedule. So it's very different than other ones, so, you know, because I think what Margaret said is what I experienced, which is there are some subcommittees and then the board, which meet very uh, relatively infrequently as comparisons. Yeah. So um, that's good news, in my opinion. Definitely. Okay, Margaret, we're, we're, th there are no more hands. You're ready okay. to go. <laughs> so, um, so here's the end of feasibility. So feasibility, I think is misnamed. <laughs> it's really due diligence. Um, and so what they want you to do, what you're required to do in that phase is look at the build, do assessments of the buildings, do a collect all the data that you need to do the design, and then do write the education program, and then identify a minimum of three options that are possible and then name your preferred one. And that, that part of the process includes some very high level estimating um, that points to the one you would prefer. And then what you're gonna do, you, you are reviewing, you have to make a submission at the end of that, but you are reviewing with staff during that time. And typically once you have submitted, you had, so you're submitting here, you start right into schematic design, which is the development to the highest level that you can achieve of the design for the purposes of getting the price right. So what's, what's interesting about this project is, and this came up for those of you who remember the OPM selection committee meeting, Mary Piketty was questioning me about this. Um, you know, she's saying, well, this is, overall, this is pretty fast, project. I think it's not too far off what you did before. Might be a little bit shorter in feasibility, but again, you know, if we're able to start sooner here, maybe it's a little longer. The thing that's different about this than their typical projects is you've done all those studies. You've had a structural engineer look at the buildings. You've had mechanical assessments. You know, there's a lot of data already collected. And Mary was saying, well, maybe the selected designer won't want to rely on those. Well, I think it really depends on whether you're talking about a renovation project or a new construction project. And she, but she's Mary's right. We need to kind of identify that as a question um, in the RFS. So what's happening here again is edu writing the education program, which I believe you have, but we're now gonna modify to be for a smaller school, um, potentially with some of the older kids in, in, in the middle school system. You have a lot of due diligence, but you do have to now say, what are our three options, which is the community process piece. So to me, the, I'm not very worried about the designers. I'm concerned about the, in this phase, getting to the point where you, when you make your submission, you have a pretty good sense that the community is be, behind your preferred option. So, um, so again, somewhere in the middle, if we decide we're doing CM selection, you make the submission, you picked your option. Now, this is 
this is work and it requires, you know, continuing to update the community and build, like here I would say, from a community perspective, you're really building enthusiasm for the project as it develops. Um, but this, um, as the architects in the room will attest, this is the work of like figuring out how you're gonna build it, right? And there is, um, this is a milestone um, that is a kind of, I would call it peer review. The MSBA has this group called the Facilities uh, assessment subcommittee that's, you know, there's some architects, there's some educators, there's some people who have engineering backgrounds. So they look at the design and comment. And it's a really important milestone for the MSBA, but it is not, doesn't change the course of the project typically. So you do your schematic design, you know, again, if we are able to stick to the schedule, we would get done in July. So this end of June and July, we're estimating and kind of going back and forth about nailing down anything that we can think of that's going to affect cost, right? So that when you make the submission to the MSBA, which I'm guessing is going to be in mid-July if they have their usual August vote, um, that's really final. So there's an opportunity um, which isn't really reflected in how green the line is here at the bottom to really kind of say to everybody it's in. And then when the MSBA takes its vote and they voted <laughs> and then, you know, then you're into this, the fall of kind of full on, you know, getting the community excited about it and having the vote in early November. So, um, Margaret, are you ready for questions at this point? I, I am ready for questions. And Bye. I know Margaret <laughs> said she could join us, but then I think you told me that you had a hard stop at 8.30, is that correct? I do, I have to. I can text them and tell them I'm gonna be a little bit late. I can remember what I did with my phone, but... Um, okay, so why don't, we, why don't we stick with 8.30? Yeah, so why don't we say 8.30? So questions, comments? I'm not seeing any hands up yet, but I do. I have one um, on the green line, on the community engagement line. Yeah. Um, my, I have a, a couple of different ones that when you getting down to three possible ways of going. Right. Um, I think early on, we need to get as much buy-in to those three and the preferred. And I saw you have dark green there. Yeah. So, so trying to think with you, um, and you don't need to answer it now, of do, should we have a subcommittee? Should we have something that's community outreach? Should we be doing some forums? What should we do so people know what's coming? Mm -hmm. because, and then similarly, when we are now at, we've got the building designed, um, at least currently, the, ten, the plan is this would be an override vote. So it's the um, selling, right. marketing, get, gaining enthusiasm for the whole project at that point. Yeah. Um, again, just thinking with you and, and having you um, uh, talk about getting prepared to do some of those while we're at this early uh, designer phase, you know, not waiting until we have to do them, but actually yeah. getting set up to do them. That's my yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, so stepping back um, in the situations where we've had several projects, say three of our four projects so far, I've had override votes. They've all been successful. Actually, the, there's a fifth one, Holyoke, that was not, but that was a pretty big reach, which was doing two schools. Um, the ones that were successful um, were successful for, in my mind, two reasons. One was that the building committee was able to work to support um, and inform uh, not just the building committee, but the project team, a, a really strong community group. Um, and I think, I know um, 
we talked about at the interview, some things like Facebook and other things that we, tools that we didn't have at the time. But I think identifying your, um, the real leaders in the community who are not on the building committee and um, uh, really facilitating them, making sure that they have the information. It's that group is really important. You know, it's the group that's going to make the lawn signs and make the wristbands and stick signs and windows because the building committee is really not allowed to spend money um, public money to do any of this. You can certainly take a stand for a public project, but you can't, you can't contribute money towards, as a group, you can't contribute money towards supporting the project. Then there is overlaid on that, a, a structured set of opportunities at different levels, small and large, for people to hear about the project. And I am a big fan of, um, I don't know if you have PTO or parent council, um, in Amherst, but I am a big fan of kind of building up. Um, I always like to say, you know, you want people to be hearing from other people about the project. So if you sort of start with the parent group and inform them, and then you build up and then there are public meetings that you're starting to get buzz because of the, the parent community and people are going, oh, I hear there's a meeting. I heard somebody talking about in this grocery store, I'm gonna listen in. I, I am not, I feel like one of the places that these things fall down is when you just have public meetings and you don't generate the buzz because it's the buzz that makes people come to the public meetings. Thank you. Jonathan, you have a, your hand up. Yes, just, just a, a, a quick question. I, I, it's more for personal clarification. This is the, the vote that would happen at this uh, stage um, is a town wide vote. It's, this isn't, this isn't town council making a decision. If it's an override, it is, it is a, a town wide vote, correct? Yes, it's a, it's a debt exclusion override. That's a projection. Thanks. And actually, can I just clarify a language thing? Cause the MSBA is picky about this in my experience. There are debt exclusions and there are overrides. And, and the debt exclusion is if you're under your tax levy I think that's right and that over no the override is when you're under your tax levy and the debt exclusion is when you're not so i can send you a little bit of language about that but i i think it's important i don't i couldn't care less everybody the debt exclusion override every, most people don't care the msba does care and they've <laughs> they've reminded me to be clear about the language in the past so so people say override when they mean it's a, when they mean it's a debt exclusion but well but the common it, language is yeah the general public uses them interchangeably and understands right. them as being the same thing. Yeah. It's a it's a fine point of where you are with relative your, to your tax lobby. So, uh, um, any other questions? Um, I guess you know, Margaret, with what you've laid out, my one was: Will you give us? Um, we we've been meeting. We have not had frequent meetings because up until now it was getting the OPM on yeah. board. So yes. it looks like the rest of June, July, Ju June, July, August, we have a lot, we have meetings that we will, will you give us um, a schedule? You don't have to give it to us now on yeah. you recommended how often we meet and what we need to do um, mm -hmm. so that we can then get it on people's calendars. Um, and do, and, in, and then the second question is that usually a full committee and a subcommittee, or usually would you want to be meeting with the full committee every time? So both questions. Well, you know, back to my point about the, um, it, the RFS, the design RFS being an opportunity to build consensus among the committee. I'm, if, if it's possible, I'd personally be in favor of developing the RFS for the full committee. But I believe what you did before was you had a subcommittee that worked on it and then brought it to the full committee. So I don't feel strongly about it one way or the other. I just want to make sure that the full committee is, um, it feels like they're, they're looped in and understand what's being discussed. I, th I think the full committee for this makes total sense because this is now getting into what, what do we want? Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and how, so do you have a sense of how often um, 
we can, and I can talk to you later about this. So just, or you can email, you know, so this is where the, I guess, first week in June, first weekish in yeah. June, but we should have at least another meeting in June. And then how often in July in order to get to the point where we're right. Yeah. Well, I, I think hopefully the RFS is going to be done in July. Okay. So I, and I actually think because of the iteration with the MSBA, let me check with them, but I think we'll need to meet several times here, a couple of times here to look at the applications together and then prep for, so it's really, there, there's more work for us to be done here. And then in reviewing the applications, going to the interviews is just going to the interviews. I mean, you don't, you don't have to meet for them. So that's, but I will get the schedule that from Brittany about what they anticipate. And then I'll suggest back, are Wednesdays the best day for you? Um, they, they originally were the best days, um, but we can poll people again. And 7.30 was a good time because um, several, as you heard when people went around, mm -hmm. several people work in the school system. And so yep. this allowed them to get to their day jobs. Yeah, uh, and so, and and I, I guess it, people can let me know if Wednesdays are not, but they have been a time that seems to have worked for people. Mm -hmm. And I can't raise my hand, but Margaret, does seven thirty in the morning work for you, or is that? Oh, yeah, bad? No, so, seven thirty is great. So that so I think everyone is hearing that there, when once we get that back from Margaret, that there may be in the month of June, more meetings coming um, and, and we're, we're, we're targeting Wednesdays. So we, we need to, I'm sure you know this, we need to post a meeting 48 hours in advance. So, exactly. we, can, so we will uh, do that internal discussion and we'll just post them all um, so right. that people have them on their radar screen. Um, Great. Yep, I think that sounds good. So let me get with Brittany and give you a proposed schedule for that that meshes up with the MSBA timeline. So Paul, and we have two more minutes of Margaret's time. So, anyone yes. so one, 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 of one of the key questions that one of the key questions I don't think we addressed is the uh, development of a website, a project yeah. website. Will you be doing that? Yes, we had, we had, uh, you had asked and we had offered. And when, what is the time frame for that? Um, I do not believe you need the website up until the designer is on board. Um, I need to go talk to the person who will be doing it in my office. Can I ask who will be the point person at the in the at the town for the development of the website, or will it be the committee? So we have a communications manager on the town side, and the school district also has people who, who would do that. So mm -hmm. Mike and I can talk about that. But yes, we'll we'll have one person that will be your point person. So for what we've done for some projects is we've had, so there's been the town, the district's website, and then the district's website has had a link yeah. to the, is that the way it was set up before? Um, it would be super helpful to know if you, if there are websites that you have seen that you particularly liked, or if you want us to bring you a recommendation about it. Okay. Yeah, I can, we, we can gather that and, um, I did some of the background interview checks for. Oh, great! Right. Yeah, and a few of the school building people said they love their website, so I went and looked at it. You know, oh, so, fabulous! But, but it's I wouldn't otherwise have ever looked at, at a website. Um, so if you have any examples on building yeah. projects, but one was specifically a building project, and the way it was laid out, uh, they they liked. So thanks for asking that, Paul. So yeah, right, now, we, right now we have a web page within the town site that alerts mm -hmm. you to a meeting and puts meeting materials, but, and we'll do, so I think you're suggesting keep that going until we're, yeah. we've got a designer, okay. Yeah, because once the designer is on board and we've negotiated the contract and sorted out, you know, the kinds of questions that Mary Bichetti was asking, we'll have an overall schedule for the project. At this point, I wouldn't want to put an overall schedule forward, which is probably what people are most interested in, without it being developed in, in concert with the design team. So any, anyone else, while well, we have Margaret for maybe 60 seconds more, but <laughs> um, 
I don't see any, I've got the full screen up. Um, so I, I wanna thank you very much for making the time. And we will, sure. at this point, with this point, we'll probably schedule um, next Wednesday. Um, we'll, okay. we'll set up a meeting for next Wednesday and um, Paul and Mike and I will we'll just quickly talk, but I think if it's so, people might be able to anticipate that it'll be the next several Wednesdays in June if we want to keep on this schedule. Um, so that will um, that will be the forward-looking timeline. Paul? The only challenge with that is that at this point, the ability to meet virtually goes off the table on June 15th. Until there's new legislation, we cannot meet virtually. Um, we would have to have a quorum in the chair in a room and the library, all, everyone else can log in just to give you a hint. So next Wednesday might be a challenge. We expect there may be legislation on Tuesday, but we don't know. <laughs> They're really taking it to the mat, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. And, and Paul, that would be for the committee, but Margaret could be, we could bring her yes. in. Yes, yes. We can always bring. So then we also get, need to get, that will mean we have to get a room, but we'll get a room. Mm -hmm. yep, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> Back to having to find a room as well as, haha. <laughs> okay. Caught, but, and Paul will pr provide us with coffee or someone will no, no, we'll, find, we'll find the coffee machine. The most important thing is where the coffee machine is. So thank you so much, Margaret. Um, sure, it's so nice to see you all. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Thank you. So I'm gonna exit and um, I'll let you wrap up and see you next week. Okay, so I'm gonna um, see whether there are any community community committee comments or questions um, looking around. I'm looking at the faces on the screen so you can raise your hand if you do. Um, and if not, uh, we do take public comments and we have uh, two attendees. So I don't see anyone on the committee. Okay, um, yes, Sean? Yeah, I was just gonna quickly update the committee that we, um, we had sort of a, a preliminary meeting with Eversource and MassSave about some incentives around um, net zero and things like that. It was a very early meeting just to kind of understand what the program looks like. Um, but the I think the big thing is that's just something we'll all want to keep in mind as we go forward is that um, there'll be this added component of making sure the building's net zero and we're trying to do find other sources of funding um, to help offset that cost. And, and Eversource seemed really eager to participate in this. They, this is a high priority for them. Yeah, the, the amount of possible um, funding was in the six figures. I forget exactly what the number was, but it, you know, it wasn't small, but it wasn't huge, but it was definitely something we would want to um, probably participate in to get that uh, funding as long as it doesn't conflict with anything else we're doing. That'd be great. So anyone else? Okay, then we're open for public comments if either uh, either the attendees raise their hand. I, I think Diane is leaving. I don't, neither, I don't see a hand up. Well, that was for me a very productive meeting. Um, it feels like a, a real beginning. And so um, we will be finding a room, unless Paul tells us, someone tells us we don't have to have a room uh, for June 16th uh, at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and uh, thank, you, thank you, everyone. And so to the extent we've got examples of these RFSs um, that have gone out for designers, you know, we probably have one when we did Wildwood, you know, you know, people, we'll see whether we can put them in a packet that if people want to read them and and ask Mar Margaret for something as well. So we'll just see to the extent we come together next time we know we can have a focused discussion. So th thank, thank you everyone very much. See you next Wednesday. The meeting is adjourned. Bye-bye. Uh,